Good evening, it's Thursday. We're live here at Vicarage Road for Inside the Hive. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, a great show on the way for you this evening. We're going to look back at recent matches. Craig Cathcart is taking on the 60-second challenge. We've got a sneak peek for you tonight as well of the Captain America episode 2 where Jay Demerit is speaking to Tim Howard. We'll look ahead to Manchester United this weekend. Plus, we've got an exclusive interview with Hassan Kamara as well. We're going to have a little game of Ask Tommy as usual. And as always, make sure you get your questions in for tonight's guest. You know how to do that by now. You submit them to our studio panel on the YouTube comments below if you're watching on YouTube and then on Twitter at Watford FC and use the hashtag of Inside the Hive. Two great guests on our show this evening. As always, we can't do it without the Watford legend that is Tommy Mooney. Tommy, how are you? Very well, thanks. Good evening. How's your week been? Golf is always our standard intro question for you. I played yesterday with Sir Nigel Gibbs. Good man. How are you getting on? T- partnered Gibbo against two season tickets holders. And Gibbo made the winning put on the 18th, so we were winners again. So Good man. sorry to Tim and Toby, but better luck next time. <laughs> Love that solid performance. Uh, joining me and Tommy tonight, then, we're very pleased to say we're joined by Odion Egalo. Uh, Odion, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. How are you guys? Yeah, we're good, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us on the show, first of all. Um, of course, you're in Saudi Arabia right now. What, what are we doing for time-wise? It's seven o'clock here in the UK, but what's time-wise like for you over there? Yeah, it's 10 p.m., yeah. <laughs> it's three hours difference, you know. Yeah, no, massively. Um, how's it all going for you out there? Because, of course, the last time we saw you here in the UK was when you were at Manchester United. Um, you had a couple of clubs in Saudi Arabia now. How are you enjoying it? Yeah, not bad. Um, I'm enjoying my time here. This is my second year going now with a different team here in Saudi Arabia. And everything is going on well. Uh, scoring some goals and uh, the team is doing well. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm good. Odian, tell us that, and, and everybody watching, what's, what's the biggest difference between football in Saudi Arabia and what you're used to here in England? Well, Everybody know the, the Premier League is the best league in the world and uh, the, the standard in Premier League is always high. The intensity, the, the, the coverage, the fans, the stadium and everything, you know, the organisation is top, top and everybody knows that, you know. So the league here is still growing. A lot of foreign players are coming in, a lot of foreign managers and all that. It's still growing, but I would say it's... It's a good league and it's a strong and tough league too, but you can't compare it with the Premier League because for me, Premier League is the best league in the world. So it's, it's gaining a reputation all of the time. What sort of level do you think it's at now in comparison to English football, say? Championship level or...? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say championship level because it's very tough, it's physical and it's... You know, in each team now you have seven foreign players playing, so a lot of... Uh, uh, foreign coaches in the league and all that, a lot of tactical work and a lot of intelligent player in the league and all that. So I would say yes, championship. Mm. What's, what's it been like playing across the globe? Of course, when you left Watford, of course, you went across to China uh, and now you're in Saudi Arabia. What, what are you, what's your daily routine been like for, for those kind of teams? Is it a similar routine to what you have in the Premier League when you're with Watford? Uh, yeah, in Saudi Arabia, we train in the evenings, you know. You know, in, in England, you train in the morning, then you have all the days off, you know. But due to the weather, yeah, because the weather is very hot during the day, you know. So they, they put the training during in the evenings. Like now, I just finished training. I'll just drive back home now for me to join this this show. So we do training in the evenings, yeah. Then we have like a longer day. Then we have shorter night go train. In the evening, they come back home, rest, sleep. Then throughout the morning, we're at home till like 5, 6 p.m. We go to training again, you know. China, I think we train in the morning. When I was in China, we train in the mornings because the weather are not too hot there. And it's a different life, different uh, league entirely too. So it's a different culture too. So it's good. I'm, I'm happy I, I get to learn and live in different culture. So it's something I... I, I'm going to cherish uh, 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 for a long time, you know. What about any other differences when you, you get used to certain preparations? I know when I, I played in Spain at the end of my career, I found it really difficult to, to get used to the things that they do naturally. For, for example, they would have their pre-match meal five hours before and it would be a five-course meal. 
all separate, which I thought was strange. I'd always played in, in England all my life, and I was used to beans on toast at 12 o'clock on a Saturday. What do they do different yeah. in China and, and Saudi Arabia that's different to here? Uh, I think the, the, in Saudi Arabia, yeah, we, we ate the pre match course, I think four hours before the game. Then uh, uh, it's not compulsory, and we had snack before, before we go to game, like two hours before we go to the stadium and all that, if you want to take anything and all that, and they bring some fruit in the dressing room, you know. I think same thing in, 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 in China then. So, but in Spain, it's always different, you know, because they, they have to eat first plate, second plate and third plate, you know. I, I, I I've never done that too. before, audience. To I'd never experienced it before <laughs> when they have the first plate, the second plate. When they brought yeah, my yeah. chicken, I thought, well, where's my pasta? I want some pasta with my chicken. And the guys had to say to me, no, that's, that's <laughs> next. It's on the way. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's too much sometimes, you know, and me, sometimes when I eat lunch, you know, I don't, I don't like to take snack before the game because I don't want to feel heavy or have too much stuff in my stomach before so I just take like fruit and all that before before the game like two three hours before the game you know but some people they still eat pasta you know before that and I, I found it strange too because I can't do that you know so everybody it depends on how your body works you know you just do what what you feel is okay for you and what will keep you going yeah massively for, for you what what Club, have you preferred playing out different countries? Of course, obviously, Premier League is obviously the pinnacle for a lot of players. Um, if you had to pick between the two, of between China and Saudi Arabia, which one's your favourite? Uh, I played three years in China. I really enjoyed my time. Uh, this is my second year in Saudi now. The, the league in Saudi yeah, is tougher than the league in China. Uh, I think I'm enjoying it here. Yeah, I enjoy my time in China, don't get me wrong. But... I enjoy the league now because it's it's more tougher and it's more challenging for me now. So I'm playing in a team that plays in the in the Asia Champions League, playing the World Club competition and all that. It's it's more demanding. So I I, I love it here now. What about the crowds, Odin? What do the attendances? I know they're improving all of the time. How do they compare to to English crowds? No, no, no country will be compared to English because it's a tradition in England, you know. Like, weekends is like when you get ready and go into church. That's how it is in England. It's a tradition. Every weekend you see people coming and turning out in the stadium field. So I don't think any country will be compared to England in terms of fans, you know. Maybe you say maybe like a country like Germany and all that, you, you compare them with England. But yeah, the, the turnout are not that much. Only when you're playing like a derby game, or play like a close rival, like a big team, like your team then, before you, you, you see turnout, like the last game we played three days ago, four days ago, against Al Nasser, because it's a derby game and all that. The stadium is, is packed, it's full and all that. You know, apart from that, you don't see the stadium get filled up, you know. But in England, every game you play, every game in the weekend, whether you are the first, you play the last in the bottom, the stadium is always filled up. So it's a different league entirely. Mm. Um, Odin, we're going to talk in more detail about your time at Watford a little bit later on in the show, but uh, just have a, a little comment on that. Um, how special was your time at Watford for you? Yeah, if you if you want to talk about Odioni Gallo, you want to mention my career, the success I've had today in my life, in my career, you, you, you can't take Watford away from it because without Watford FC, I don't think I'll be where I am still today because I feel what I did in Watford, in the Premier League, the first season in Premier League, that's what I'm enjoying to today, you know, because whenever you want to talk about me, you watch my record, what I did in Watford and all that. Even till now, when people see me, they say, I remember your time in Watford, your scoring goals, you had Troy Deeney and all that. So people always remember that partnership, they always remember what I did in the Premier League and all that, you know. So uh, I'm still enjoying it now. So. I, I really enjoy my time in Watford. I'm grateful for that club. The fans still love me till date. I love the fans. I still follow Watford. We lost uh, 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 yesterday. I was not happy about the score, but I just hope things will change and the, the, the team stay up and don't, don't relegate. Really yeah, no, massively. And uh, we're going to move on to talk about those recent games right now. We're going to obviously start off with talking about that game, uh, of course, against Aston Villa, which was a great performance and a great three points. So let's kick things off by looking back at that match. Great play. 
is Mela Saar. Emmanuel Dennis in acres of space here. Dennis! Brilliant save. Nearly the perfect counter-attack from Watford. Buendia onto Ing, surely off the post. King, brilliant ball. Sissoko, and he went for it himself. Coutinho, Philippe Coutinho. Here is Ismail Assar. Dinks the cross in, and Watford have scored! Emmanuel Dennis! This is absolute class from Saar. Emmanuel Dennis, he wanted to win that header. Chances for Watford have been few and far between. They have taken one. And how crucial a goal could that be? So with the cross in, King, and that is another magnificent save from Martinez. Of course, good to pick up three points there at Villa Parker. Tommy, you were there for that one. Um, how do you rate that performance? Excellent performance. I thought it was the best 90 minutes of the season. Um, I, I know in the first game of the first game of the season, we were well on top, but I thought we were we were structured in defence when we won possession back. That transition between defending and then attacking, perhaps at Burnley and, and West Ham, it just didn't it, the penny just hadn't dropped. But at, at Villa Park, I thought we were we were excellent. And you have to say, when you look at the chances, it could have been four or five. But also a special mention when Ings goes through there, Ben comes out and makes himself so big that he's had to be very, very accurate. And obviously he wasn't because he's hit the outside of the post instead of the inside. So I think the, the game went, it went really well for us. And I, I, I was delighted for the players with that performance and the supporters. You know, I was sat on the opposite side doing the commentary. And, uh, and literally when the ball went out to Ismail Asar, fabulous first touch and put it in. Two minutes before I just said, Manuel Dennis needs to get inside the far post instead of hanging out at the backside and then it's, he gets his header. So yeah, it was, it was a, a brilliant goal, but thoroughly deserved three points. Oh, it's like you know something about this game. Yeah, I, I'm, somebody else must have told me about it. <laughs> uh, Odin, of course, uh, Phillip Park, it's never an easy place to go to either, is it? And uh, obviously to get the points, there, especially when you've got players like Ings and Cortino in that side as well, to, to come away for three points is, is massive. Yeah, uh, Villa is a difficult team to play. And uh, I think since uh, Gerard took over, they have been doing well. They have good players, you know, but... Watching the game the other day, I think uh, Watford really played well. Like he said, would have scored up to two or three goals in that game. You know, a couple of chances from Danies and um, uh, King. But it was a good performance, good game. They won three, they won one zero, and it was a good game. I was expecting the team to build from that. You know, with the confidence and all that against uh, Crystal Palace yesterday. But unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It was not. It was not it. No. So we have to move forward. But the team is they did well against Villa. Yeah. No. Massively. Uh, of course, we just seen Emmanuel Dennis's goal there as well. Um, obviously, a fellow countryman of yours, Emmanuel Dennis um, Odian. Uh, he's got great potential, hasn't he? And a great player, and someone could be vital for the side between now and the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah. He's a very good player. He's he, he, good techniques. He's fast. He can score goals. He's very intelligent and all that. You know. You just have to keep fit and keep taking his chances and scoring goals. Uh, I think it's, it's, he and if, the, if, the, if the season is going to turn around and they're going to save, they have to keep Emmanuel Dennis, Sa and King firing. So get a couple of goals home and away, then I think the team can escape relegation. But mm. they have a good team and I hope they will escape that. Mm. Emmanuel Dennis is really doing well. No, massively. Um, Tommy, of course, Delight at the weekend against Aston Villa and then just real disappointment last night. Yeah, really disappointing uh, result in the end. Having said that, at half-time we were, were more than well in the game. Um, I thought we, we, we were good in possession of the ball in the first half. Obviously conceded the goal. A little bit unfortunate. Um, it's got that 
deflection, but we bounced straight back from it. And Musa getting his his goal, I thought he was he was very strong in the midfield again last night, driving everybody on. Um, but then they go on. The, the last three three goals for Crystal Palace was stunning skill and stunning finishes uh, from Gallagher and and Zaha. So. Yeah, they were good goals, but we just didn't have the tempo in in the second half. And when the ball was in the box, every time it was crossed, there was one person in the box. You're limiting your chances to score goals. I think we've got to work harder to get in the box. And like I said about Dennis earlier on, you know, if it comes in from the left hand side, Ismail Assar's got to get inside the back post, and vice versa on the on the opposite side, moving forward. But yeah, it's gone. It's another home performance that perhaps never matched an away one, but. Nevertheless, we've got another chance in a few days' time. Certainly have a way at Old Trafford this weekend. Um, let's talk about some of the players we've got here then, uh, Odion, at Watford, because, of course, we've got a pretty strong Nigerian contingent. Um, what does the Premier League mean to everyone in Nigeria? Uh, it means a lot because uh, we grew up watching Premier League back home in Nigeria. Like me, especially, when I was growing up, there's no other league you can talk about apart from the Premier League, you know watching the Premier League, watching uh, the teams there and all that, you know. So, Premier League is a very, very big thing in Nigeria, you know. So, every Nigerian wants their, uh, their, their countryman to play in the Premier League, you know. If you're not playing in the Premier League, it's like something is missing, you know. They say, oh, you have to go to the Premier League, you're playing in the French League, in the Spanish League, in the Italian League. They just want you to go to the Premier League because I think it's the most watched league in the world and even in Nigeria it's the most watched league in Nigeria in Nigeria you know everybody in the weekend want to see what's going on in Premier League so that's why any Nigerian player that have the chance they want to come to the Premier League so I'm happy I have some Nigerians there in Watford I just hope the team keep doing well and survive the relegation. Odium we know that the Premier League is the, be the best division in the world and, and like you say the fans are very different and I think the fans are, uh, are also what makes the Premier League but we've also got probably more of the Nigerian players in the Premier League than we've had for, for many years during my time we had a lot of uh, Nigerian players and I think it goes in cycles doesn't it the, the national team's really strong now and mm. like you say a lot of those players are playing in the Premier League and in other top countries mm. Yeah, yeah, because even in the national team now, you 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 have to be playing in Premier League to even have strong faith in the national team, you know, because playing in Premier League gives you edge ahead of other players playing in different leagues, you know. No disrespect to other players playing in the other leagues, you know, but when you're playing in Premier League, you have more edge than them because, like I said, it's the best league in the world for me and is the most watched league and people watch it week in and week out know what's going on in premier league every time you say, ah, i saw this nigerian guy playing in premier league he's doing well and all that you know because people watch premier league every weekend more than the other leagues who inspired you growing up who are your nigerian footballing icons yeah growing up watching a uh, 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 kano playing for Arsenal. you have a uh, uh, jj okocha playing for boating wanderers and all that you know so you you support the league, you know. You even though you don't support the club, but you watch the league. You watch your fellow Nigerians doing well. It, it gives you joy. It gives you happiness that one day you too will be there, you know. Yeah, completely. Well, you you made it there, and let's now start to take a look at your career and of course your career with Watford as well, because of course lots of happy memories of your time here at the club. 2014 to 2017, 100 appearances, uh, 39 goals as well. Um, obviously, it was always a dream and ambition of yours, I'm guessing, to, to come and play in that Premier League from what, what you've said already. But tell us about how the move happened and, and how did you end up at Watford? Uh, I remember I was, in, I was in Granada in Spain. You know, uh, we gained promotion to the La, La, La Liga and I played two, two or three seasons in La Liga. And my agent told me, is he, is he okay for you to play in the in the championship with Watford and all that because I know then the team was doing well. A season before then, Watford did so well that they, they, they missed the promotion, you know. So Troy Dini, Vidra scoring goals for Hysteria and all that, you know. So I spoke to Gino and he said, when you come with you, with these players we have here, I believe we can gain promotion to the to the Premier League, you know. 
So and me, my dream was to play in the Premier League, you know. I so said, why? Some of my friends said, no, it's not nice that you're going to leave the Spanish League and go to a championship and all that, you know. But me, I know what I, what, what I was doing because I, I, I know what I wanted. You know, I want to play in the Premier League and I know me joining the team with a crop of players and they have in that team in Watford back then, we have the opportunity to gain promotion because I know previous year they did so well, they, they, they almost gained promotion, you know. So I joined the team and luckily we did so well. I think I scored 20 goals, Troy Dini 21 goals in that season and we gained promotion to the Premier League. It was one of those exciting moments in my life with the fans and everybody was so excited and there comes the Premier League again and I did so well in the Premier League, scoring 15 or 16 goals in the Premier League, my first in the Premier League. Was so good like i said that's what i'm enjoying to today you know because uh, when you want to talk about my time in the premier league you talk about when i played in watford scoring goals and doing well with troy dini they remember that partnership and all that you know so i'm very happy i'm delighted the fans love me there and i always look forward to 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 watford game and supporting the team you know buddy and when you came to Watford and to, to the Championship and then on to the Premier League. Did you have to change your game, your style of play? Because it's very different to, like you say, in Granada or Udinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's very different because I remember when I joined the team, you know, some, some games I would complain that in the Championship, because Championship is very hard, it's very tough, the key, you have to fight and all that, you know. I was complaining, you know. My agents told me back, they said, this is Championship, you have to be stronger, I know you're tougher, but this is not Spanish league, you play Tiki Taka, no. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be hard, you have to be ready to run, you have to be ready to fight, because this is championship. They will kick you. If you don't kick, they're going to kick you. So be ready for everything. It's not like in the Premier League, you have teams that can play, teams that are very technical and all that. In championship, you're going to fight and all that. So I, I was getting bullied the first few months then, I said, no, I have to adjust. Then I adjust and I get used to the league. I start fighting and getting my way into it. You know, I know it was tough in the beginning. It was very tough. Compared to where I was coming from, it was tough. I cry every time, like complaining to my agenda. It's too tough. It's too, you say you are strong, you are capable of doing this. Because the way they kick in the championship, the way they fight is like they're playing rugby, you know? So I try to get used to it and I take it from there. <laughs> That's why I retired in Spain. I went to Spain at the end of my career. <laughs> that tiki taka and, and the don't put the ball in the box. I said, right, that's it. I'm I'm done. <laughs> this finished. is bo this is boring. <laughs> this is not the footballer I like. I like the championship and the fighting and kicking. I know it's very boring there. They just want to play the ball. They don't bring the crosses. No no tackling. The, the the pace is very slow. You see one team playing the ball. You just jog around another. In in championship, it's not like that. You know. Everybody's running. It's in Premier. I see you, you run from 90 minutes like this. The games never stop. In Spain, you just play. You play. You play. You move another. In champ, the, the game was like this. I was like, what is that? You play 90 minutes. You run back and forth, kicking with fighting. You see people going 50-50 with their studs up like this. I say, wow, this is great football. <laughs> I was joking. That's why we love it. That's why we love the championship in the Premier League. <laughs> Um, Odin, of course, you mentioned Troy Deeney a few times there. You had a, a wonderful partnership with, with him at uh, your time here at Watford. Um, what was the secret to that? Well, uh, Troy Deeney is a good guy, apart from a good player. He's a good guy, a good captain. He did so well for Watford. And I just feel the secret is just understanding each other, you know. When I played with Troy Deeney, we did not even sit down one day and said. Ah, we're gonna play this way. We're gonna do this way. When I move this way, you move this way. You know, we just clicked. You know, when it goes, I I I, I try to understand him, and he tried to understand me without me and him sitting and not saying any words. You know, I I know when we are playing a game. If Troy Dini is going up, I'm running behind because I know he's gonna win the ball. He's very good in 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 flicking the ball. He's, he's very high and big and tough, he can bully the defenders and all that. So getting used to that, uh, I just know that, okay, if this guy is going up, I'm running behind because he's going to win the ball, I'm going to go. And he knows when I hold the ball too, he knows how to do. When the ball is coming to him, he just open his leg, take on, I know. So it's just like 
we are just doing that and it's get getting on better and better and better every game and that's it it's not something we sit down we discuss about it now we just start clicking like that as time goes on we get even more better and better and we are very difficult to stop them in premier league we take the defenders on aware and was were nightmare to defenders then in premier league mm. um, tommy of course you had some noble partnerships as well what, what was the secret for you I think very much like Odin says there, it's natural. The best ones are the most natural ones. You know, when I was when I first came here, Kevin Phillips was it was. Although I'm not the size of Niall Quinn, it was the the big man, the smaller man, and then with Michelle and Gongi, where we got promoted. You know, both of us would be would be both going for the same headers because we both wanted to win win the header. And then in in my last last years. How the Helgerson was was very similar, so it's. I think it's about what what comes natural the most of the time, mm. and, and and like you say with Troy, you just it's it clicks, and if it clicks, mm. you you don't get that confusion between who's going for the first ball and who's going for the second ball, yeah. and also it, yeah. the more goals that you score, you think that that partnership is the best one, and like you say, you it's get twenty, best. Troy yeah, gets twenty one, twenty one forty one yeah. goals between you. That's a good partnership. Yeah. And, and I think yeah, everybody yeah. from the outside looks at the goals in a ratio um, to, yeah. to games where you play together. Mm. Um, Odin, of course, uh, you're loved by the fans here at the club as well. Um, you had a special relationship with the Watford fans. Yeah, I do. I do. Every time I, I got a message from them, sometimes I comment on the, on the, on the page when the team are playing and I got a lot of comments, a lot of support and a lot of caring you know you know the the fans always always there to support the team you know when i was there even when i was not playing well when i was not doing well they are always behind me and when i was doing well they are even more behind me you know so the fans i always hold them there to my heart you know anytime i'm around i come to the vicarage road they just sing my name and all that you know so it's something that that i i cherish you know leaving the club since how many years and you see the fans still support you even I'm here in Saudi Arabia, I still get some messages from the fans and all that, you know. You don't find that easy everywhere you go, you know. No, massively, the fans here are incredibly special. Of course, if you're watching this tonight and you want to ask a question to Odin, uh, you're going to have your chance throughout the show tonight in the comments box below if you're watching on YouTube. And you know how to submit a question as well on Twitter, at Watford FC. Use the hashtag of Inside the Hive. And uh, there's going to be a chance for your questions coming up very, very shortly. But before that, it's time for another 60-second challenge. And taking it on this week is Craig Cathcart. I'm Craig Cathcart, and this is my 60-second challenge. Long distance runner or short distance sprinter? Short distance sprinter. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Dream dinner guest? Leonardo DiCaprio. Best stadium apart from Vicarage Road? Um, Allianz in Munich. Favourite song? Anything Oasis. If you could play any position, where would you play other than your own position? Striker. Favourite food? Uh, chips. Best dish you can cook? Uh, I cook like a pasta salad. Tea or coffee? Tea. Fancy restaurant or takeaway? Takeaway from a fancy restaurant. <laughs> Favourite movie? Um, in Bruges. Favourite social media? TikTok. Morning person or night owl? Morning person. Favourite sport other than football? Boxing. Oh, is, that, is that the challenge to That's it. Just do short answers? Just how many questions you can answer, yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Anything you else? happy with 14? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, Craig's happy with 14. Tommy's happy with that as well because he maintains his joint fifth position. Still in the top five. I'm glad that Craig never grasped on to you just got to answer the shortest answer and as quick as possible. To be fair, I think Quizmaster Steve has a lot to answer for with the speed of his questions and the explanations of questions. But I'm looking forward to seeing right. the pasta salad. <laughs> <laughs> How do you cook that pasta salad, Greg? <laughs> love that. Okay, uh, time now then. Odion, you're going to love this. This is uh, Tommy's favourite part of the show. We have a little bit of fun. It's a little game called Ask Tommy. We're going to ask him four questions right now. A little bit later on the show, we're going to ask you four questions as well. And then we have a tie 
tiebreaker at the end. The good news is your questions are all about you. Uh, so hopefully that's not going to be too difficult for you, but we make the game very <laughs> difficult for Tommy. Uh, so the aim of the game basically is to ask Tommy some very difficult questions. So nice and easy for you, Audion. Uh, Tommy, you ready for this? I am. Don't worry, big fella. Yours will be really easy. <laughs> okay, question one. Uh, we always start with a golf question because we know that is Tommy's favourite pastime. Uh, and your first question is this. The West Course at Wentworth is 7,284 yards. Okay. But what is the par score for a round on the West Course? It used to be 72. Is it 71 now? Don't know. What, what would you like to give me the answer to the question, Tommy? Is it one of those two? Potentially. Uh, well, 72 is the norm, but I'm sure they've made one of the par fives a par four. 71. Correct answer, 72. Still 72. Uh, so, nil part after question uh, one. Question two. Of course, we play Manchester United this weekend. In Watford's 4-1 victory over Manchester United in November, who was sent off for Manchester United? <laughs> I should know that because I was doing the commentary. You were doing the commentary on that one, Tommy. Um, Would you like uh, yeah, one or the other? Yes, please. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo or Harry Maguire? Maguire. Correct. That's one point on the board. I'd have got that anyway. I was coming Would to you, that. You, I was you, just dragging it out. Just no, a bit it's, of drama. it's nice to add the tension for yeah, the show. It's just good. a bit of drama. It's good. Not that we need to feel time because we've got a great guest on the show no. tonight, so it's all right. <laughs> uh, okay, question number three. Tonight's guest, of course, joined Manchester United on loan. But in doing so, did he become what? A, Manchester United's first Nigerian player, B, the first player to play for Watford and Man United, or C, the first player to wear the number 25 shirt? Um, first Nigerian. Correct. Two points on the board. Uh, right, your final question for the minute is this. Uh, talking of United, uh, your first game back after injury in the Premier League was against Manchester United. But in what minute of the game did you set up Tommy Smith for Watford's second goal? See, these are the kind of questions we go for, Audion. You'll get a multiple choice if you want one. Tommy doesn't. It's ridiculous. Honestly, big man, it's ridiculous every week. Do you want to, do you want to really scale it down a little bit? Yeah, please. It's, in, it's between the 70th and 80th minute. Yeah, it was 77. No, it was 78, according to PremierLeague.com. No, it was, it was, was 77.58. I can see why they've got that mixed up. Unfortunately, I have to take the answer from the Premier League Honestly, channel. Honestly, big fella. So, unfortunately, it's just, it's that is joke, uh, two points for Tommy out of four. Audion, there'll be a chance for you a little bit later on to uh, test your knowledge and see if you can get another victory for our guest on the show. But it's time now for the most important questions, uh, Audion, because these are the ones that are coming from the fans. So, uh, a massive thank you to all of you who've got in touch so far. Uh, Connell Metcalf says, uh, Audion, uh, will you ever come back to say hello to all of us Watford fans for a game? Of course, uh, I will always come back if I have the, the time, if I have break from, from football or from the season here. Why not? I remember the last time I, when I was playing in China and I have my, my off time, I was in Vicarage Road to watch the team play. I was even doing the the commentary in, with the Sky Sport, you know. So uh, it's always it's always joy for me to come back to see see the boys, see the stadium, and see the fans again, you know. So of course I will always come back when I have the time. Well, we look forward to welcoming you back then uh, at some point in the near future. Uh, next question comes from Fred, and he would like to know what is your favourite moment at Watford. Uh, I would say. When we gained promotion, that was one of the favorite moments. And our game against Liverpool, we won 3-0 in Bakeridge Road. I think that was one of my best games. And it was a great moment for me and the fans and all the players. Good, good answer. Uh, Dahoom is next. And they would like to know, what's your favorite goal in your whole career? This is the, that's a tough one. Uh, your entire career, your favorite goal? So far, of course. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I would say, I would choose the goal against Everton. That's my first goal in the Premier League because uh, that goal means a lot for me. Premier League was my dream and playing my first game in the Premier League and scoring a goal means so much for me. So I think I'll choose the, the goal against Everton. 
Nice, and uh, I think we can take a look at that one right now on the screen as well. So hopefully that's going to bring back some good memories for you. Will Ingold's been in touch, and he would like to know your favourite goal for Watford, and I think that pretty much answers that question as well. Uh, so uh, thank you very much to Will and to whom for their message. Uh, Rudy Clark Johnson would like to know, who was the manager that's got the best out of you so far? Uh, I'll say Kike, when I played against... When I played with Kike... You know, he just took over after game promotion and all that, you know. So after a couple of games, I played behind Troy Dini and he said, no. After two, three games, he changed it. He said, I have to play ahead. So Troy Dini will play behind because he feel that when Troy Dini goes up, I'll, I can run faster, I can move faster and all that, you know. So he tried to give me confidence. He told me, you're a striker. You're always going to have like two, three chances in a game. Try to take one, try to take two if it's possible. But one in the Premier League, if you take it against a big team, it will go a long way. So he, he built confidence in me. I would say Kike was one of my favourite managers. Nice. Uh, final question for the moment then comes from official Coco Renation. And they said, would you ever come back to play in the Premier League? Of course, if the opportunity comes, you know, when I went to China, people said it was finished, you know, and uh, he, he not, I'm not going to come back and all that, you know, but surprisingly, I came back to Manchester to play, you know, so of course, you know, in football, you can never say never. If the opportunity comes again, why not? I'll take it and I'll, I'll come to do my team again. I would certainly love to see you back in the Premier League as well. If not, back at Watford as well sometime soon. So definitely come and see us uh, next time you can here at Vicarage Road. A massive thank you to all of your questions so far. Of course, still plenty of time to get those in. We're live here at Vicarage Road every Thursday. So if you're watching on YouTube, in the comments box below and on Twitter, of course, at Watford FC and use the hashtag of Inside the Hive. So the men are in action this weekend uh, and so are the women as well. If you want to go and see them, they're taking on Sheffield United. Uh, Saturday, March the 5th is their next game at 7.30 p.m. kickoff against Kings Langley FC. You can get your tickets now at tickets.watfordfc.com. If you fancy a little bit of a half-term treat, if you're on holiday uh, from the school holidays, you go shop.watfordfc.com. We've currently got 40% off all Kelmy kits in there as well. That's training kit and, of course, the match kit as well. And if you are on your school holidays and you're one of our Junior Hornets, check out the website, juniorhornets.watfordfc.com because we've got some new great things on there. There's giveaways, the membership packs, chance for you to go to away days, be a mascot and the special uh, events as well, juniorhornets.watfordfc.com. Now, of course, if you're watching this live on YouTube as well, make sure you hit the subscribe button because there's lots of great content that's on our YouTube channel throughout the weeks as well. Now, some of you may have seen episode one of Captain America with, of course, favourite Jay Demerit. Well, episode two is on the way and he does it with Tim Howard. Here is a little sneak peek. And now you're there. You know, you're playing with arguably one of the greatest managers of all time in Sir Alex Ferguson. And now you start to play. And I remember this so plainly because when I landed in the UK shores 2003 and this was this was your big 2003 2004 was your was your big year for Manchester United and I remember seeing this American guy that was winning Premier League player a goalkeeper of the year you know like that's a big deal and I remember thinking that sitting in a pub drinking a Guinness going wow there's Americans doing really big things here I want I hope I can play in that league one day and again I'm still playing in the 12th division but I'm watching you on TV and I'm thinking to myself going like hey how does this guy get here and now he's like he's one of the best players in the league which means now he's one of the best players in the world like talk a little about like that like what was it like in those locker rooms how did you gain confidence to know that you could get out in one of, again Fabian Bartes World Cup winner how do you get out in that field with the guy like you know Alex Ferguson who picks you and then perform the way that you did Man, it was, uh, you know, it, it was hard. I think it, it it was just trying to keep my head above water. Um, you know, I was playing on pure adrenaline, raw athleticism, knowing that that was kind of my bread and butter. You know, when you talk about self-assessment and self-awareness, I realized I was in at the deep end. I, I realized I was, you know, I, I wasn't quite ready for this moment. At the same time, you don't go knock on a manager's door and say, hey, I'm not ready. You know, you just, you figure it out. You, you know, you sink or swim and, and like I said, I was I was made some mistakes, sure, had some great games, sure, because I was just using my raw athleticism and instinct, and that always served me well. Uh, but again, I was a 23 year old little boy, you know, I didn't I didn't know anything, and so that that was that was really difficult. I think there's some part of the moments, that, you know, that's the thing that that 
um, the outside world doesn't see about athletes is, is those those moments of doubt. I said moments of doubt. Heck, you have a career filled with doubt, and then you just try and you try and brush it aside and, and you know push that closet full of demons closed just to get yourself out on the pitch um, and hope to play well. And and um, and then that game is Alex Ferguson in your ear at the time. Is he kind of pumping your tires a little bit, trying to get you pumped up for this opportunity, or is he kind of letting you be? Because he wants you know, to that's, how you that's, the, that's the interesting thing. When you go to Manchester United, you're uh, you're expected to learn very quickly. You're going. They, I think, they understand you're going to make mistakes. You're going to be ridiculed for those mistakes, and then you're expected to um, quickly turn that around into success. If you don't, no problem. They'll get rid of you because they have enough money to bring somebody else in. That's how it works at top clubs. Sure. So there is no babying. There is no a hey, unlucky son. It, it's it's let's go. This needs to be better. And so you know, I remember my first uh, you know the, the hair dryer treatment was in was in the community shield we I, I ended up having success saving some penalties you know held up the trophy but at halftime Thierry Henry scored in the first half bent it over the wall and I got a massive massive talking to which you know scared me to death you know and so that was obviously was it what you know was there something behind that was he making sure I understood what you know the enormity of the situation of course he was but I still got it you know there we go, episode two of Captain America with Jay Demer and Tim Howard is live from tomorrow on our official YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification when that goes live tomorrow evening. Don't miss it, it's gonna be a cracking episode. Uh, right, this year the Premier League Kicks campaign celebrates its 15th anniversary and we've had the chance to lo nominate a local legend uh, and we have picked one of our Premier League Kicks volunteers, Matthew Kibler. Uh, here's a little bit about Matthew. Premier League Kicks has been great. It's been running for the last 15 years. We have seen so many lives positively impacted. Matt's been with the Trust for the last 13 years. Uh, he started off as a participant and shortly after became a coach. He was involved in the start of the sessions in Northwoods and now we're here at Goals Ryslip. Matt has made a huge impact on many young people's lives, but he doesn't know how much of a positive impact he's had and that's why he's won the award. So over the last 13 years, um, I've done a lot of different things, a um, lot of different venues as well. So even though I started at Northwood School doing three, uh, three sessions a week there, um, I've also done uh, Harefields, I've done Cedars. Um, I followed this down to Rye Slip, the session that I do now. And it is quite interesting seeing the different variety of kids that um, come to the different sessions because obviously they're different areas, so you get different types of kids, different backgrounds, things like that. So it's been very uh, interesting, but also challenging, getting to a level where they sort of understand and, and get on your level in terms of when you speak to them and relating to them. Um, obviously, as I get older, the kids stay the same age. Um, so it's a bit unfortunate for me because a lot of the lingo and that I don't understand, but it's quite, um, I, I've enjoyed every moment of it. Matt is, he's, what do you call it? How can I explain it? He's fun, but at the same time, like, he makes sure there's no nonsense when we're playing football. Uh, Matt is a great coach, like when he comes here he's always happy and he motivates us as players and we feel like we're at home when we play here at Kicks. Um, surreal, I didn't, didn't quite expect it when I got uh, the message about it. I was very happy, I had obviously been here a lot, quite a long time, been here for most of the time that Watford's actually been within Kicks. So to, to be recognised um, for all the work that I have done, it's it's quite rewarding actually and yeah it's nice to get some recognition sometimes. Well deserved, well deserved. Well deserved. Well, a massive congratulations to Matthew, our nominee for our local legend in the Premier League Kicks 15th anniversary. Um, Tommy, another fantastic campaign, another fantastic thing that our community trust does. Yeah, absolutely. And you see there from Matthew, he's gone from player to coach almost like several other players from the first team uh, have done. So, yeah, I, I, you know, my thoughts are, are on it, that all of the initiatives that the club have to involve the community because they understand without any community, there's no football club. And, you know, if you work on that, that ethic, then you, you'll be successful. And certainly the, the trust have done 
magnificent job over the years. Mm. Oddie, and of course, for your time at Watford, we've mentioned the fans already, but getting out and about in the community, was that something you always looked forward to as well? Yeah, we, we always do, you know, we, they, they pick players turn by turn to do that, you know, going to city kids, having time, um, city fans, having time with them and all that, signing on to ground, giving them some gift and all that, you know, is 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 all part of football, you know, because without them, you don't get the fans in the stadium, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't get people supporting the team, you know, so I think those coming to works are one of things we have to always do to 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 keep the, the people around us happy you know? no certainly certainly and uh, i say massive well done to matthew and thank you to all the work that you do for the premier league kicks here at watford uh right okay time now to hear an exclusive interview from another one of the first team players let's hear now from hassan kamara you've played a few games here now how do you feel you've settled into life in england and life um, at watford uh about football is very is different of france yeah. Uh, he is more in intensive. It's very difficult. All, all the time, the game, the, during the, the start of 90 minutes, every run, 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 <laughs> run, run. It's very, very difficult. But I, I like that. And uh, my life is good. Uh, I have found uh, my, my, uh, my house uh, quickly. Mm. And now I have my, my routine. Yeah, nice. But he is, is cold this time. It's so cold, <laughs> isn't it? Tell me but about it. Good. It feels like you already have a really good connection with the Watford fans. It feels like you've only been here a short time, but they already love you. Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, it's good, it's good. Uh, I know the, the fan, uh, the fan is, uh, is, is the club. Mm. The club is player, is uh, di uh, direction and fan. Mm. So... And uh, in this position, we need uh, we need fun, we need fun because uh, we need to, we need uh, we need the zen for push the team. And uh, for me, it's normally to to speak with them, and uh, it's uh, it's, no, it's normal. And what do you feel you can bring to this Watford side? Um, you know, we've seen little glimpses of you already, but you know, going forward long term, what do you think you can bring? What can you add to Roy Hodgson's side? I think I can bring my energy because uh, I am so energetic. I, in my hand, uh, I I came from uh, from Nice, mm. and Nice we play uh, higher in the classment. You understand? Yeah. And uh, I don't lose so many games. Yeah. So when I I, uh, I come here, in my head, I don't I have not played so many games. Yeah. I have not lose so many games. So when I come here, I can uh, give uh, happy <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, pos positively, mm. you understand? Yeah. And like that, uh, I, I try to, to give that at the team. Well, good to hear there from Hassan Kamara, head of the game this weekend. Uh, Tommy, what's your thoughts of him so far since he's joined us? I think he's been impressive. It's nice to see him smiling. And like Audience said it, 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 at the beginning of the show, everybody around the world wants to play in the Premier League. It's very, very different to, to the French top flight. He, he has to manage his energy and enthusiasm until his fitness levels are at Premier League standard. Um, but he, he's had an impressive start and, you know, he's one of those attacking fullbacks. And if he can put crosses in the box, you know I like a cross and for strikers to get the headers. If he can put crosses in, in the box and create opportunities to score goals, then he, he, he could go a long way. Yeah. Like I say, he's enjoying winning games. That, that's his first one since he had arrived at the club. Yeah, massively. Um, Odium for you as well. How important is it when a player, when you come into a, for a new side, to, to make an instant impact and, and hit the ground running? Yeah, like you said, he's, he's happy in the environment. He got his house. Uh, love the, the fans love him and all that. You know, when you when you get you you move to a new team and you get the support you needed, look for a nice place you live in, you stay comfortably, and the fans loves you, you keep doing well, it gives you more confidence, more zeal to want to fight, you know. And like he said, he's getting used to the league, you know. He said it's he, he, different from where he's coming from, you know. Like I said, when we started before, Premier League, you have to be ready to run for 90 minutes, you know. It's not slow league, you have to play, you have to be ready to run. And for the games I've watched him play, he's, he's been doing well and I think he's going to even improve more when he gets more settled and more, more comfortable, he's going to do, do well. He's a good player. 
Yeah, no, Massey, another chance this weekend for him to get another win under the belt. Of course, Manchester United, who we beat earlier on in the season back in November, of course. Uh, that's the next match up. And then after that, uh, some big fixtures on the way. Uh, we've got Watford at home. We then travel away to Molyneux to take on Wolves, away to St Mary's to play Southampton, then that home match against Everton at the end, or towards the end of March there. Um, let's have a look forward to that Manchester United game. Uh, Ollie, and of course, a side that you went on loan and moved to and played for. How did that one all come about? <laughs> it's going to be a tough game, you know. Manchester, they are not doing so well in the Premier League now, even though they won their, their last game. Uh, they want to win the game, they want to fight and win. But, you know, football, anything can happen, you know. Watford won the, the first leg, and uh, if, they, if they play well, they can, they can do better than what they are doing now. But they just have to, to get keep the ground running and build up from the last um, game against Villa. I saw them play. I saw exciting team. I saw attacking team. I saw team that is eager to to win a game. I saw a team that, that want to score goals, that was pushing and uh, everything, you know. Not like the game of last night, you know. If they play the way they play against Villa, I think they have a chance for scoring goals and, you know, when you score goals against a big team like that, you keep them, they will be nervous and want to come all out and you can surprise them, you know. But I think it's going to be a tough one. I just hope the better side will win. Yeah, wow. Three points for Watford, fingers crossed. Um, let's talk about your transfer to Man United. How did that all come about? Well, uh, it's, it's crazy, you know, because I know I remember when I was in Shanghai, I was in pre-season training and all that, you know. My agent called me that Manchester United, they are looking for striker and all that. And my name is being mentioned because they're looking for a short time loan for a striker. They don't want to spend big money. They just want a loan for a striker. And they, they got like a couple of striker, four or five. And my name is being mentioned and all that. Like I'm going to be interested. I said, why not? Coming back to the Premier League, not even just coming to the Premier League, coming to Manchester United because I know I support that team from where I was young, you know. So... The opportunity came and they started talking and I said, maybe it's just a rumor, you know. So I remember I was lying down on my bed in a hotel and all that, you know, and my agent called me that Man United want to take me on loan, that the other strikers, they are not getting an agreement. Even then, they wanted to get a King, Joshua King too, but they are not finding agreement and all that. So they wanted me on loan and all that. I was good. I jumped up from my bed. I was going crazy. That would they, they need to speak to someone from from my team in Shanghai. You know, I got up. That was 11 p.m. in the night. I went to the the translator room. I said, "You have to get in touch <laughs> with the, <clears throat> the sporting director now." That my United wanted me on. They want me on loan and all that is going to happen. They started speaking to each other and all that. I said, "Till 6 a.m. I did not sleep. You know because." They were speaking, document, one paper, and all that. I was on my bed shivering like, is this happening, you know? Because I never dream, I never think something like that would happen because all, all this against me, you know, playing in China, during the pandemic, just kick off then in China, my age and all that, you know? So why is my United looking for me? So it was just like a dream, like a film, you know, till... When I saw them fax the contract and all that I was going through it, I see the letter heading is Manchester United. I said, this is really happening. This is really happening. I signed it and all that. They faxed it to them. I still did not believe my eyes till when I landed in Manchester at the airport and all that. And I saw Sky Sports. I said, okay, this truly is happening. You know? it's one of those what was it like, moments that... Odium, what was it like when you first... <laughs> When you first got into the dressing room at the training ground and you see all of the players of Manchester United and you know walking into the training ground, what was that like for you? I know you'd played in the Premier League before, but Manchester United's different. It's, it's different. It's a, looking at the team from outside is different. You know, being inside, you know, it's a massive team. It's a big team. The organisation, everything is different to compared to where I was coming from and seeing the players and all that. that okay. You watch them play for Man United on TV and all that. You're going to be sharing the same dressing room with them and all that, you know. So the first week is not yet done in my eyes. I'm, you know, 
It's still when I started playing and all that. And every morning I want to drive into the quarantine training ground to go and train and come out as a Man United player. You know, it's it's a big it's a big thing. You know, so I enjoyed every moment of it. I enjoy it, though it was short. But I love every bit of it because it's a dream come true for me playing for one of the big biggest club in the world, Manchester United and all that. You 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 don't get that often, you know. So I I enjoy every bit of it. Obviously, that's our next opponent this weekend. Tommy, you, as you said, you were involved in that victory here at Vicarage Road. Uh, what do the team need to do this weekend to go and have a positive performance at Old Trafford? I think they have to have that, that mental attitude and the positivity around the players that they had at Villa Park and they had at, at Goodison earlier on in the season. You could argue that the, the way that we're set up, we're, we're a better counter-attacking team. Certainly with the pace of, of, of Josh King, Ismail Asar and Emmanuel Dennis up front. That suits us, the counter-attacking, but also the energy of Moussa Sissoko in the middle of the pitch. And we have to take the game to Manchester United when we're in possession of the ball. Be patient with it, which they were at Villa Park. It wasn't just a ball forward as, as soon as we won the ball back, like it was perhaps at the London Stadium against West Ham. They were patient in possession at Villa Park and they got the rewards by creating opportunities to score. We only took one. Chances are we might need to take more than one to win the game on Saturday. No, Messi. And of course, don't forget to keep up to date with all the social media channels to keep your eye on that one. Uh, Tom will be on commentary on that game as well. So uh, have a good trip up to that one at Tommy. And fingers crossed, bring back three points for us, please. And uh, we can talk positively about that on next week's show. Right, Odin, it's time for the moment I can tell that you've been waiting for. Tommy set the benchmark quite low at two out of four questions. Uh, even if you get four out of four, we'll stu- still do the tiebreaker question because they're normally Tommy's favourite questions. Uh, so let's kick off for you uh, with your first question and then we'll wrap up with some fan questions to end the show today. So question one, in 2014, you made your debut for Watford in the first round of the League Cup on the 12th of August, away to which team? Would you like some options? Yeah, please. Uh, Stevenage or Swansea? Uh, Stevenage. Correct. One point on the board. Uh, question two. In 2014... <laughs> see, Tommy Honestly, doesn't like it every week. Debut uh, team. Everybody knows who they're playing against on the debut. <laughs> <laughs> OK, question two. In 2014, you scored four second-half goals and were voted man of the match in a 7-2 home routing against which team? Blackpool, Blackpool. Correct. Two out of two, and you're level with Tommy already. Uh, Question number three. No pressure. No pressure, big fella. (laughs) (laughs) Question number three. How many goals did you score in the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualification campaign? It was the most goals that anyone scored that obviously helped Nigeria qualify for the finals in Egypt. Seven. Seven. That is correct. Well done. Three out of three. Uh, did you get an award for that? <laughs> oh, Ian, did you get an award? Does it say on your award how many goals you no, got? No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like getting the golden boot. You expect him to forget that? Uh, never, never forget Honestly, that. Honestly, we need an independent adjudicator in here. Tommy, these don't questions. hate the player, hate the game. Right? If these are the rules, it's what it is. Uh, right, chance for four out of four, Sorry, Odin. If you get this right, uh, in March 2016, you scored a goal in a 2-1 win at Arsenal in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, putting the Hornets into the last four for the first time in how many years? Was it eight, nine or ten years? Ten years. It was nine. But that's all right. You've got three out of four, which means you've officially won. But it's time now for the tiebreaker question, which we do anyway, because this is Tommy's favourite. So the question I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask Tommy for an answer and then you get to have to go higher or lower. And Tommy, we've not done this style of question for a few weeks, so I thought we should bring it back. Come on, where is it this time? So how far is it from this very seat at Vicarage Road to the King Fahad International Stadium, which is where, of course, uh, (laughs) Odion plays his home games right now. Uh, It's as the crow flies. uh, It is between 3,000 and three and a half thousand miles. So Tommy's going to give us a number between three and three and a half thousand. Uh, and then, uh, Odion, you just get to go higher or lower to have a convincing victory. So Tommy, from this very seat in Vicarage Road to the King Fahad International Stadium, how many miles are we talking? 
Bearing in mind that most weeks, Odian, he, he doesn't even get the correct mileage himself when he does the, the answers. <laughs> I am going to say, I'm going to go right down the middle and say 3,325. 3325. 3325 is Tommy's guess. Would you like to go higher or lower, Odian? Uh, a bit higher. You can go higher. The correct mileage is 3,000. And 89, which means Tommy's got another question right. So that's 3-3, three, three, so you've got a draw. Big, that's 3-3, three, three. you've got a draw out of Tommy. <laughs> that's not bad, that's not bad. Um, Odian, love that. Thank you very much for playing in our little bit of fun there. Uh, we're going to finish up with the favourite part of the show, of course, which is the fans' questions. A massive thank you to every single one of you who's taken the time to send in a question this evening. Uh, Abby is our next question, and she would like to say, who was your favourite player to watch as a child? As a child growing up, I I watch a um, lot of players, Nigerian players. I watch, like I said, I watch Kanu, I watch uh, JJ Okocha, I watch Samuel Eto, I watch Dwight York, Andy Cole. I watch a lot of strikers going up and I can't say one is particularly, personally I watch. I watch strikers because I'm a striker, I watch the way they play and the way they score goals. Nice, good question. Thank you very much, Abby. Uh, Jamie says, who is the best player that you've come up against? Well, I've come up against many best, many players. Uh, I would say... I would say when we played against Arsenal, I come up against Mesut Ozil. He's a very good player, very skillful and can give good pass. Nice. Uh, Jake would like to know the best player you ever played with. I would say that I played. I've played with a lot of good players. I would just say the Bruno. Okay, nice, like that. Uh, Josh says, uh, "What's been the biggest highlight of your career so far?" Biggest highlight in my career so far is scoring. Like I said, scoring my first goal in the Premier League, which was a dream come true for me. I, I really cherish that. Mom. Amazing. Love that. And the final question comes from a, a young viewer we've got who's live in the studio, which is Tommy. Uh, Tommy, you've got a question. Odin, I've just got one question for you. Have you got a battery for that smoke alarm that keeps beeping in the back? <laughs> 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 Have you got I one? I know you're hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> also, whenever we've gone to, to one of the videos, Tommy's gone, I, I think you need to do battery for that smoke alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Get somebody to put it in, mate. You, know, you need uh, some sleep. You need some rest before training tomorrow. <laughs> Get somebody to put a battery in that. I, don't, I didn't know you were hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Odin, thank you so much. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, stay Good with enough, us because uh, we're going to film something a little bit special after uh, the show's finished tonight that you guys are going to see a little bit later on. So Odin's going to stay with us uh, and we'll do that afterwards. Uh, thank you very much for all of your questions, Tommy. Uh, thank you very much to you as always for joining us on this Thursday evening. Uh, next trip away, of course, is to Man United at the weekend. If you're travelling up to support the Hornets, have a safe journey, bring back those three points and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>